to look for the clues of, to genius, uh, you know, all, the, all of the uh, brain functions have to be a cellular-based function. So uh, when Albert Einstein's brain was analyzed by Marion Diamond to find the cellular basis of genius, she analyzed a part of the brain involved in um, complex uh, imagery and necessary for calculation, mathematical calculation, as well as a prefrontal region. When she looked at that, she found no difference in the number of neurons or the size of the neurons. What she found, however, was that Einstein's brain had more glia. And that was a, uh, a moment that focused our attention on glia that had been ignored. Because all, all of our ideas about how the brain worked goes back to this idea of, of uh, analogy to electronic circuit. Um, but the brain could work differently. So what is the mechanism? Is there a mechanism that you can put your finger on that this glial, these glial cells will actually play a role that would yeah. make genius come to life? So that, that, was, that was the, uh, the breakthrough, is that uh, neuroscientists were never going to understand what glia did glia do, while using electrodes to study the brain, because glia do not communicate by using electricity. And that's part of why you miss them, that's right? That's yeah. one of the reasons right. we miss them. Um, so uh, it took a new technique, and that technique was uh, developed, was uh, fluorescent calcium imaging. And if I can s explain what that does, actually, you can have some of those slides of astrocytes, so we first show people what glia look like. Um, yeah, so these are astrocytes. And you see they look nothing like neurons, so that's why they were dismissed. And why did Einstein's brain have more of them? Um, well, it turns out that glia communicate, and uh, rather than electrodes, if I can have the house lights down just a little bit. Yeah, you can bring the house lights so, down a bit. In, in, scientists developed a new method to study electrical activity, nervous activity. They took a dye. Hang on, before you break it, can you bring the lights down? Yes, can bring the lights down, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All righty then. Maybe not. We can imagine that the lights now are down. All right. Well, you've all seen this. I just want to explain to set up the deck. This is a glow stick, right? And you know that when you break this stick, it makes light. And that works by mixing two chemicals together to generate light. Scientists realize that neurons communicate with ions, one of them being calcium. So they made a dye that would glow when calcium went into cells and put this in brain tissue to watch neurons. And in 1990, <laughs> look what happened. <laughs> in 1990, this is what they saw. Uh, the video, please, of uh, astrocytes communicating. I put a dye in, into these astrocytes, and the brighter the fluorescence, the warmer the color. And these cells are communicating. This startled neuroscientists. They're not communicating using electricity. Can we roll it again? And not only are they communicating with each other, when I stimulate the neurons, it looks like lightning bolts. The glial cells respond. See that? The glial cells responded. All right, so just to bring this all together. Glial cells are communicating, unlike neurons, that communicate like landline telephones, serially. Glia broadcast signals. They work like cell phones, and they broadcast neurotransmitters. They also sense neural activity, and they respond to it. They release neurotransmitters at synapses, and can strengthen synapses. They can remove the neurotransmitters that neurons use to communicate, weaken synapses. They can pick up electrical activity, uh, communication between synapses, communicate it non-electrically through a glial network, and go control another synapse somewhere in the brain. And we've recently, just in a few years, discovered that astrocytes, a type of glial cell, tile, tile the entire cortex in non-overlapping domains. So we now have a structure superimposed on the neuronal structure where glial cells can control individual domains up to 100,000 synapses per astrocytes. And this, may, this is a new dimension of brain function and regulation and may explain how you can have regulation of moods. You talked about waking up with, with uh, creative insights. That's well known and, and I, I rely on it myself. <laughs> um, Glia control um, uh, moods, activities. They control neurotransmitter levels that, that maintain uh, states of arousal. Um, and uh, so there are many ways now that we see that glia could be involved.